Guten Tag, this is a quick update on my bakery and today marks a very important day for me because I almost sold my first bread. Let me show you exactly what I did. Around six months ago, I announced on my channel that I will be opening up my own bakery. And not just any bakery, I wanted to make a par bakery. A friend of mine was in the hospital and I wanted to do something good for him. I love making sourdough bread. That's mostly what this channel is about. So what I did is I baked him a bread, but I didn't finish baking the full bread. I would only bake it for around 30 minutes. And afterwards I took that bread and I sent it to him via mail. All he then did is he took that bread, he put it for 10 minutes into the oven and he had a really, really, really fresh bread. Almost like if you were baking bread at home. He said, my whole flat smelled like fresh bread and it made him so happy. So then I thought, why not replicate this? I don't want to open up my own local store. I want to be able to ship bread all across Germany. Well, Germany, that's where I'm from. But maybe also in the future worldwide, I don't know. And that's where the beauty of sourdough bread comes in. Sour because it's slightly sour and this acidity is helping you. Because of this acidity, your bread doesn't go bad so quickly. So you don't have to add any additives to your bread. It's just flour, water and salt, nothing else. And this really enables you to do so many cool things. You can ship your bread to other people because it won't get moldy. So my idea was, why not open up a bakery that specializes on exactly that, par baking. And it's been a hell of a ride and I'm so happy that I just today dropped the first bread in the mail to the first customer. Let me show you the process that I opted for for my first bread. My plan was also to do everything open source. Being an engineer, open source is a very big thing, which means we're just fully transparent on whatever we're doing. And I wanted to do exactly the same with the bakery so that you can ideally take this concept that I have and you could replicate this at home. This would totally allow you to also open up your own bakery. And in the spirit of that, I'm just gonna show you real quick the process that I opted for for making my first bread. I'm using a stiff starter for this bread. It makes excellent, not too sour bread. In a large pot, I add 350 grams of medium strong bread flour, which has around 12% protein, 50 grams of whole wheat flour, 80 grams of sourdough starter. In summer, I typically use 40 grams. 320 grams of water, equaling around 80% hydration based on the flour. And now I'm adding 8 grams of salt. Then I mix everything together by hand. I want to make sure that everything is nicely homogenized. Around 15 minutes later, and just see at the gluten development we got for free. Nice. I let that sit for 15 minutes. Sorry, one five, not 50, 15. We Germans in our English. Afterwards, I start kneading the dough on the bench for another five minutes. I take a break for another 15 minutes. Then we will add our final level of dough strength by doing a lamination. Overall, kneading and working time so far on the dough has been roughly 15 minutes. The next step is to extract a small piece of the dough. Very important, this is your fermentation guideline. It makes everything so much easier. Every two hours now, I'm giving the dough one stretch and fold. Once the sample doubled, I'm ready to proceed with shaping the dough. After shaping, I let the dough rest for another 15 minutes at room temperature to then move it to the fridge overnight. The next morning, I directly bake the dough in my preheated oven at around 230 degrees Celsius. The temperature is really important. Don't bake too hot. I'm trying to test this new stencil that Emerald made me. Thank you so much, Emerald. It has been a great interview. It would turn out that I should really have used rice flour. Next time. I think this stencil could be really good. Because Gluten Tag, that's the slogan of my channel. You know, Guten Tag, but Gluten Tag. After 30 minutes, your bread is ready, but the crust hasn't formed yet. The core temperature should be at least 95 degrees Celsius of your bread. I then remove it from the oven and let it cool down for at least two hours at room temperature. We just par-baked a really nice loaf. The bread turned out nicely, except this strange thing at the front of the bread. And of course, the stencil that I didn't manage to properly apply. Regardless, time to ship it. So I asked on the community if someone is interested. Then Alex responded and sent me a message on Discord. For packaging, I went to my local department store and grabbed me a few Ziploc bags. I also grabbed some additional packaging material. Then I'd slide my bread in the Ziploc bag and close it airtight. 
This way the bread stays humid, which is exactly what you want. You don't want your bread to dry out, which would happen just at room temperature without it being in a Ziploc bag. Normally the bread would start to mold pretty quickly, but with sourdough it doesn't. That's the beauty. That's the idea. I still had some straw laying around. Sorry, that's a German insider joke. I used the straw to fixate the bread a little bit in the box. Then I wrapped it real good and off to my postal office. Mission accomplished. The first bread has been sent out. I'm super excited to see how Alex likes the bread that I just shipped her. Let's see what she has to write. I'm a little scared as well. We're gonna find out. But there are still a couple of problems where I need your help to figure them out. This is sort of a community project, I would say. So please share your thoughts. I'm gonna be reading all the comments. I appreciate all the help I can get. Problem one is definitely the pricing. So Alex is just a test customer. I didn't sell her the bread. What do you think should be a reasonable price for this bread? I'm just gonna be opening up my cost calculation here real quick. So yeah, what do you think? At how much should this be priced? Now I'm an engineer myself and I'm earning an engineering salary. On average, that's around 69,420 here in Germany. <laughs> so I think I need to make a lot of bread. How could this ever work? Problem two, the point of sale. Right now I was just advertising on this channel and it was a direct sale. But how can this work on scale? What do you think of an online shop? Is there a system that you can recommend? Or do you have a better solution? Number three, which starter should I be using? I was making a couple of videos showing you how to make a stiff starter and how to make a liquid starter. Now I think the liquid starter has a very, very yogurty taste. I think it's awesome. However, the problem, I would need to use even more expensive flour. Right now, the flour I use is around one euro per kilogram. The more expensive flour would be around two and a half euros per kilogram. Only then I would safely be able to use my liquid starter. So that's gonna increase the cost even more. What kind of taste do you want in the sourdough bread? Or I'm also thinking that maybe I should be offering both options. Number four is the packaging. Right now I was using a Ziploc bag, but that's not really nice to use plastic, right? And I was using a little bit of straw, straw, sorry for my English. So the question is, is there better packaging, something that's more eco-friendly? I definitely think it should be airtight because you want there to be a little bit of humidity inside. This way the bread doesn't dry out. Do you have ideas? Also, I think the packaging right now is, looks super boring. It should be some sort of packaging where you receive the package and you're like, wow, I'm just receiving the best bread possible. So yeah, we need to have some sort of design, I think, maybe also a note inside of the package. Yeah, what do you think? Number five is definitely the carbon footprint. First of all, from a carbon perspective, is it actually better to make bread at home? home or in a large oven. That's one thing that I want you to consider. Please share your comments. The other thing is the transport. The transport is also causing quite a carbon footprint. So what are ways how we could reduce the carbon footprint? I think that's quite important. Maybe we could do something like with every bread that we're selling, we're planting a tree or two trees, something like that. But I mean, that would also then increase the price. Maybe you have a few other cool ideas. I would also be super interested and maybe reading a full analysis of the carbon footprint. If you're an expert, please share it in the comments. Number six is definitely scaling. This time I was just using my hands. My Hans. Hans, you know, Hans is a German name. I can't make so many doughs at the same time. The next time I wanna be making two doughs. The problem is my stand mixer only handles one dough as well. So I need to upgrade my stand mixer. Also, my fridge is too small. I could maybe store five loaves. Okay, I'm gonna worry about that later, but just I think I need a better stand mixer. Is there a stand mixer that you can recommend? Please drop it in the comments. Number seven is probably the least favorite point on my agenda. That's German regulation. We have rules for almost everything. That's just what happens when you're in a democracy. Over time, you'll be adding more laws and more laws. It doesn't get any simpler. It only becomes more complicated because also old laws aren't being reduced. Okay, sorry, it's getting a little bit philosophical here. At least in Germany, when you want to open up your own bakery, you need to have a title, an apprenticeship. That's very important. There are a few exceptions though. If you only have one product, one very, very good product, then there 
can be an exception. I still need to talk to the local government offices and ask them exactly on that. What about health regulations and everything? Do you have some tips on this topic? Please share them with me. I'm really not the right person to do paperwork and stuff like that. I just get so frustrated and so bored. So I'm telling you that I'm making a really high quality product, which brings me to point number eight. Yes, eight. Is my product actually high quality? How does it taste? I mean, I'm thinking it's probably the best bread ever, but maybe it's just really, really, really bad. So I think we need to have a couple of more reviews and a couple of test candidates. Could it be that I use this distiller that the product now arrives moldy because it's not as sour? Also something we need to consider. I think this whole plan only works if the product is really, really great. Let's see. I'm gonna keep you posted with an update on what Alex says. So please share all your ideas, all your feedback here on the comments on YouTube. I would totally loaf. You see what I did there? I would totally loaf that. Also, we have a dedicated channel for the bakery on our Discord server. It's free to join. All you have to do is follow the link in the description. You're on there. You're talking to 800 other crazy bakers who will happily give you feedback on whatever you're making. Please join it and help us to make this bakery a thing. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, may the gluten be with you. Bye.